Hello everyone, it's Sue from Crafts to Enjoy and welcome to my craft room today. Today I'm showing you a very different video. That seems to be my favourite word, different video. Um, I've taken a long time to work out what to put in this video, which is why it's taken me a long time coming. I've been, I'm always asked what I use, why I use the products, how to use them, I'm doing something and it's not coming out right. There's a whole load of questions that I'm asked, so I thought I wanted to go back to basics-ish kind of heading back to basics but also showing you if you are using the correct products what might be going wrong or you might not be working quite so well for you so I was going to start this is a whole this is a mini series of um, videos that I'm doing for heat embossing water coloring and various other ones on my list so I'm plowing my way through it so every couple of weeks hopefully we'll have one coming out so I want to start with inking and stamping which is quite your basics from that you can do so many things and so many doors for you there are a whole load of ink pads. I've just got a couple here and it's quite mind blowing because I've just got five, uh, six here and you're like, oh, what do they do? You know, what do we need to be? Well, how do I need to clean them? What, how does it all work? So I thought we'd start with the basics of the, of the blacks because we use those quite a lot and I'll come on to the others in a second and what I, and what I use them for and what you've seen me use them for. Um, there's two different types, and I know these do them in different colours. Um, tuxedo Black. The, the Memento is a dye-based ink that is really fast drying. It's really good if you're using your blends or anything like an alcohol marker, like a Copic or anything like that. That will be what you need to do. Say do an outline. Say I was going to do this, this stamp here. Stamp it with that, and then you could colour it in from there, and it wouldn't. Um, sometimes the black it's kind of fade it looks just to bleed into something but that's why it doesn't bleed so that's the first one the second one is the stays on I use this quite a lot um, you've seen me use it in my videos I like it it's one of my favorites but this is more for um, water coloring so I use that a lot when I'm water coloring so you see the difference if you use that wrong your, your result really wouldn't be very good and you think oh no you're really disappointed in what you've done I'm going to take it one step further because they do refills and you're re-inkers for these. So you may think, I only need one ink pad and you're thinking, why do I recommend these or why do I say using these? But you can buy re-inkers for them. So actually, if you're going to be doing a lot of crafting, then the re-inkers are worth their weight in gold because these ink pads will go on and on and on forever. Some of my ink pads I've had for 10, 15 years and they're still in my craft room. I'm looking at them, looking a bit, a bit um, well used. I'm looking over to my left there and my ink pad, um, little... Uh, Let's find one that I've used, well, a well-used one. Um, I can't find one there because I want one. There we go, this is a well-used one. It's a pink one. But I've used it for a long time. They do different colours in them, so that's a fuchsia pink one I've used. I'm just trying to have a look, see if I can find another one in my stash, and there doesn't seem to be one there. Gee, hang on, let's have a look. That's a grey one that they do. Stamp Up don't do these colours, unfortunately, but um, they are out there. But I've used them a lot, and they just seem to, you know, they go on and on and on. And they serve you extremely well. I'm just trying to have a look, see if I find a black one. Oh, there's one of my earliest ones, jet black. There you go. That's one I've re-inked. I've put a little mark on it. It's even got where I've held it, where I've held it. It's got my two finger marks where I've stamped with it. So I've used it an awful lot. The lid, I tend to, um, sometimes the lid bit that comes off, I stick it in there to the lid with a glue dot. I just fold it over and stick a glue dot in there. I don't know if you can see that in the centre there. There's a glue dot in there holding the lid in place. Otherwise, I find it flies off or goes on my work. So a bit helps to keep it um, sealed so it keeps the, um, the ink inside. So that's the same, you know. You can, obviously, you can buy re for the mementos as well. So it's well worth investing in these type of products because if you get... I, I've seen customers that have bought cheap products. This, I think... I don't got a date on it, but I should have really. I had this before I got married, and I've been married 10 years. So, this goes to show because it's got my initials on, and I recognise it. I'm still SH, but um, yeah, it's an old one. So, I've had it for years, and it's still going strong because I re ink it. You don't need much ink, and this will last you forever. So, that's, that's that to talk about. Mento's the same. Also, I wanted to talk about Versamark, and you're thinking, what's the difference? What, you know, what does that one do? It's got on the tin here, on the, on the front of it, it's got watermark stamp pad. Um, 
you can create watermarks with it. I just want to show you what a watermark is because not everyone knows what that is. So let me grab a, I've got a Melon Mambo here. And I'm just going to choose a little, uh, let's do with that flower. It's quite a big flower, but let's choose that one. This, incidentally, has got one of the distinctive stamps. So it's got different, different sort of bits in it, if that makes sense. So it's got different heights. So it will look different. So it gives you that kind of two-tone look to it. Again, I re-ink this one as well because I use it a lot. So it takes it a shade darker than what your card is. So you can see that on there. So I've got Melon Mambo on with that. So it gives you like a watermark effect on your card. So I'm just going to go on and create a little border or something here. Uh, to... You just have to let the ink transfer. There you go. So that's, can you see that's a bit darker than what I've done? It's a shade darker than what the card is. So, from that type of thing, we also, you, you'll see me use this Versamark when we're heat embossing. This is kind of like a glue that we can say, let's just, let's just put a, say I wanted to use this leaf stamp here. Put that on my block. Let's find a block quickly to show you. And then I could use this ink like I've just done here. Put that on there, on stamp where I want to stamp it. Put some of the heat embossing powder on, heat it up, and it makes that stick. It's one thing I've forgotten to say: is you must use your heat embossing buddy before you do anything. So heat embossing buddy first to get all the moisture out of the card. Then your Versa Mark stamp, stamp, tap, 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 stamp. Um, and then your heat embossing powder. I have got a video coming out on that, so watch this space for heat embossing because it's going to be amazing. So yes, I'm really excited at that. Heat embossing is one of my favourites techniques, so yes. Um, this takes a little bit of a time to dry, but I'm just going to wait for it to dry. But that, that's what a water watermark does. Um, then we come on to the stamping, stamping up coloured inks. And there are, you might have seen lots of these type of things around. This is the older style and this is the new, newer style. Just, I've got two different colours here. But this is the, they're, they're virtually the same. They have got the same thing inside. Or well, they're different colours, but they're same. This is just different to open. It might well use my old olive. So, um, and these also come with reinkers. So my old olive has been going for... I don't know how many years now, and I re-ink it all the time. So I just wanted to quickly show you how I re-ink my um, how I re-ink my my stamp my stamp pads. So I've got double check it. I've got the right colour, old olive, and I've got the right ink pad. So all you do, it gives it such a lease of life, and it's amazing. Gently, it's kind of like a you know just see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go down the edge quickly. And it gives it a new leaf of life, and it's amazing. It tends to, tends to just sort of go in. All I'm going to do is I've got an old bone fold here, but you could use an old credit card, something you get through the post, you know, that type of thing. I'll just sort of smush it about a bit. So just sort of make sure it's nice and even. And that's it, job done. We should have done a before and after, really, there, shouldn't I, of what it was like. But that's that's ready to go again, and I know mine looks a bit well used, but that's, that's the way my stuff is. It's well used. I use it a lot. We use it in classes. Lots of different things. Lots, so many different uses for these these stamp those these ink pads. Oh my goodness! Just because these are coloured inks, you can do so many things with them. I'm amazed. So because they are really juicy and they're like a that kind of a spongy sort of felt pad, they're really good at, at we just said stamping. But also, you can just give it a little squeeze. I don't know the newer ones are not not so easy to do hopefully there's a little puddle we've created a palette so we can now take our water brush same ink pad nothing special no reinkers no nothing and then we can do some water coloring let's just get something here I've got, I've got some few scraps off to my left here and then we can do water coloring creating backgrounds coloring it I've not this isn't watercolor paper so I can't keep going over the same bit but you can see, you get the idea of what you can do with that. Uh, there will be a video coming out about watercolouring, so you know I'm going to sort of whiz past that a bit. But also, from the same ink pad, you can use daubers. Let me just find my dauber. 
I'll just quickly turn that over to show you. So this is a doorbell. It's like it goes on the end of your finger, a bit like a thimble. Oh, where am I? Where am I? My, um, my video, my camera's gone. There you go. Oh, can't see where I am. There you go. There's a doorbell. So it goes on the end of your finger, like a thimble, and it's got a spongy bit this end. Oh, mine's got a hair on it. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap lightly. From this doorbell, you could spongy edge of your card. I'm just doing it quickly on the same colour. I think I'm supposed to tap off a little bit, tap off a little bit. But it depends how, sort of like, depends how you want the edges to look. You want them to look quite soft. And I would tap off a bit of the excess, excess and make it look a bit softer down that side. But if you want it to look a bit more dramatic, then you go for it. That's a dauber. Same ink pad. Let's just get another scrap of card. I've got a sponge. I tend to, I've got some stamping sponges here that come in a pack of three, but you could use any sort of type of sponge really. I cut mine into four to make them go further and I just do it using like that. So I've cut it into four, into a sort of a quarter. I've gone like that. And if I want to do something like that, there's also ways I've done before where you can sponge onto a card and you can create a really wonderful, motley sort of looking effect. I'm just gonna just do this quickly, just do, just do an inch or so here to show you what it looks like. So if I keep going over the same bit, it's a way with your ink pads to turn a white piece of card, whisper white piece of card into something else. So you could do sort of like, um, I could go into the greens, I could make a background. That there is so many possibilities with these ink pads. I'm really impressed with these Stampin' Up! ones because they may be a little bit more than the other ink pads that are on the market, but there's, there's a few reasons why I like them. One, you get value for money. Ink pads tend to dry out, you know, and if you're having, how many ink pads? This one I've had, I've been a Stampin' Up! demo now for what, three years, and I've had this way before then, but my friend used to do Stampin' Up! And I got this when I was friendly with, you know, a Ted place in order from my friend. I've had this, what, eight, nine years? I've had it for classes. It's been when I've been out, home, class, you know, face-to-face -face classes and everything. I've used it at home like myself so many thousands and thousands of times. And not only that, the old olive colour, because I've got the ink, I've got this is old olive on, I've, off the sticker there, I've put it on the front, that matches the card. So if you are looking for old, I haven't got the old olive to hand or any Barbie blue to hand, but the ink matches everything. All the colours that will do the same, they do the ribbons, they do the, the inks, they do the reinkers. So you really are taking a lot of the guesswork out of, well, will this blue be right? Will that match? Will that ribbon match? Will, you know, is this going to work? Is this card going to work? It all works together, which is one of the reasons I love stamping up products. They're good quality and they last you. They last you absolutely forever. Another way which you can use your ink pad, your um, ink pads, is I've got a block here. And uh, have I got a spritzer anywhere? Have I got a spritzer? I think there's one. I could make a background. I've just done a very quick one here using the blocks that will dry another way to use them I could go on and on and on here but also you could take your my, my um, water brush let's get another bit of card here loads of, loads of, oh, I'll just drop it on the floor and I could still color in from it I could still go on coloring in graduating it again I'll probably use watercolor paper if I'm going to do much more than that but these are great do you know what I mean, I mean, how many ink pads can you do that with? I don't know. They're just really good, but they match. If you if you make a card, get the balmy blue pat, um, the balmy blue um, card and the ink, and it all matches. So they're just brilliant. When you look at how how many times you're trying to get a blue to match this, you go into the shop or online. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to match? The guesswork is taken out for you, which is why they're so fabulous. So that's that. Also. Oh, I just dropped it on the floor. Let me just pick that up quickly. Let me just pick that up. Dragging. <laughs> if to use the other end of it, I can drag the ink across. Straight from the ink pad. 
depends how I want it to look. But you might want a sort of a seascape or something. I've actually just taken it from there, just seeing how it goes, quite sort of at an angle. I've taken a plain piece of card and made it into that. Just very simple. I don't mind that it's got lines in it, you know, I, I, it could be great for doing that. Another thing I wanted to show you from the ink pads while we're here, I just forgot to get the, um, let me just find my, oh. rejigging my craft room. I can't find anything now. They do, you could actually, oh here we go, here's one. Let's get that one. That may be a bit yellowy, but let's try and find another one. Um, Tim Holtz is the king of distress in my opinion and he's a great chap. Um, you can do his technique of, of sponging, let's just find a uh, this is my collection off to my left here, your left here. Um, I'm just trying to find a clean... There you go, we'll use that one. I forgot to prep those that bit. So, let's get another bit of card. So, this is the same ink pads here. There's nothing special. So, already, I've how many uses have I come up with? So, the um, Tim Holtz way of doing things, I'm just going to grab my silicon craft sheet here because it's easier with that so I've got the um, I've got a ink essentials one here that has got like a sponge onto a bit of velcro and you just get an angle tap 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 off the excess and go in circles from the edge so I'm now distressing same ink pad different technique there you go just coming round you've got all the different colours so you can, you know how cool is that same, you know <laughs> fabulous again again it, ma again it matches if you wanted to go down the grungy line you can you've got the browns and the greens or whatever you can mix so that's another way Stamp up don't sell these, but there, I know these, a lot, there's a lot of these around on the internet. So, um, yeah, that's another way to use your ink pads. I'm going to double check my list and see what I've... Oh, flicking. I haven't got to flicking. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so... Um, flicking, I nearly forgot. Flicking, there's so many different ways to make backgrounds. All I've done there is pick up some ink from that. And I'm just flicking... The water brush again I could use a normal paintbrush you could use anything you could you could really sort of like go to town with it and really sort of like really sort of whack it <laughs> I don't know. you could just go to it's just brilliant and there we are that's another way same ink pad how cool is that I've got a bit of water on there as well but you know you get the idea so many uses. Background, just going through my list. Watercolour sponge, door bar. Oh, one thing I did say, uh, one thing I've forgotten to show as well. Oh. Let's do a green for a change. Let's do, let's do the blue. So, another way to take a plain piece of card, I've cut out an oval here, and let's just say I wanted to go around the edge. I could get my sponge, I could do this, but you can actually use the edge of the ink pad. Or I could use the sides of it. That's another way to use it. Same ink pad. It just goes a bit further. Depends how, how sort of wide you want your bit to come in. I tend to do it sort of like that. But again, it's only card and paper. Ink, you know, your mind here can... I'm sure there's an 101 ways to use these ink pads that I haven't even come up with yet. But again, how different does that look? Really stands out from the plane. If you've got a bit like that, that's I've just you know it really makes it pop, and you something you've got, and then you could go along and do a greeting or something, and use. Let's just find a. Let's just grab a. Um, there you go. Let's just grab any old stamp. And stamp. Let's just find a block. Oh, my blocks just fell out my container. And don't, let's not forget, we can stamp with them. I tend to do when I'm doing my inking of my stamps. 
I tend to do lots of different, lots of like little taps, and I tend to use a bit more now because I'm getting a bit older and my wrist isn't so good. Um, I use a where is it gone? Mark, I use a stamping pierce mat with a bit of paper wrapped around it, copy of paper, and I just sort it to the back of it. I have one of these on hand all the time for my stamping. It just helps me a lot. Obviously, you know, you don't want to, you want to press heavy enough, but not too heavy. And let's not forget, you can stamp with them. And they're so even in their stamping. Sometimes you get it so it's not, I don't know, it looks too, too, almost like two-tone. There you go. Again, I could come come in and, and with a, some, you know, something else and stamp round it or whatever. You know, you, there's so many possibilities here. Absolutely so many possibilities that I want to tell you about. Um, I'm just, just double checking. Cleaning. Cleaning is really important. Once you've done your work, you just think, you know, if you left them there, you know, you've got to make, I, I think that you have to look after your craft supplies and they will really look after you. It's one of those things. So, Stampin' Up this year, or last year, bought out the Simple Simply Chamois. And this is one of my favourites. I've got a few of these in my craft room. I've put them in CD cases. And don't ask me how they work. You just wet them. And there you go. Let's go. I've got a sponge I've just done. And I've got two in here. Obviously, you only get one, one in the pack. And you just do it like that. It just comes off in here clean. Magic, in my opinion. Obviously, if you are trying to be more eco and trying to say baby wipes and all these things, then that's the way to go. I've also got one for stays on. I use one for stays on and one for coloured inks. Doesn't seem to be, I've done reds and pinks and all sorts on here and they just get a bit of a just funny colour. Amazing. I don't know how that works, but it does. So that's the way to clean your stamps. And also if you are using stays on on my stamps, I do a stays on cleaner. Um, it will say on this, don't use these type of thing on your um, photopolymer stamps. But, you know, photopolymer are, are not quite such good quality as the other some of the other stamps. But you know, I use this and, you know, it is what it is. So I love that. But if you want to get a stamping mist for your um, this type of ink pad, then these are quite... And it smells really, really lovely. So that's the way to clean those. But again, if you've got a chamois, you don't need that. So it's really good. That's just what I want to show you what you may have at home. What may think, oh, what does that do? What does this do? How does that all work? While we're talking about stamps, I wanted to show you, I've, I've got out one of my first stamp sets that I bought. This is my first wooden one, the, the first um, wooden ones that I bought from Stamping Up, Lovely as a Tree. It's still in the current catalogue now, and this is how they used to come. Mine is well used, so um, you'll have to excuse it, but, and it's it's well used and loved. So this is how, this is how my, my stuff ends up sometimes. So I want to show you the difference. So this is in a clamshell case. It's one of the first ones, the designs that Stampin' Up! came up with many moons ago. So um, this has got glitter and all sorts of it. It's been well used and the kids have had a go at it as well with it, you know, that's how it is. Again, it comes with that. The, 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 you'll see these around, you know, they are still, the wooden ones are still in the catalogue some, but some, you know, some people, or you might see them on eBay or wherever you're looking. Then I wanted to come on briefly and show you the difference between a clear mount stamp and a photopolymer stamp. So the clear mount stamps are not, I think clear mount is the wrong word really, but you know, but they're not really clear. So this is a clear mount stamp and it's got like a bit of a spongy bit on the back of it there. And there's red rubber on the other side that's been put together. So, and the photopolymer are the clear ones that you can actually see through. So they're, they're a bit misleading in their, their name really. Um, I find they, these don't have any cushioning. This is a brand new stamp set, so these don't have any cushioning. You'll notice it's just like the the the. Um, if I get a stamp on there, I'll show you the difference. So it's just like the red rubber bit, but it's just it's just there's nothing to it. So um, it doesn't have any cushioning for you to help you with the impression. So you, that goes on straight onto a block. Let's get one out and let's show you what they come out like. Let's get one of those ones there. Let's get a small one. I'm just going to move those out of the way because I'm getting all bits of paper and all samples and everywhere. So um, I tend to use my stamping pierce mat for this type of thing. And let's just get a bit of scrap there. Let's get a bit of, let's just do a pink one. There you go. Melon Mambo. Again, I've got the old star ink pad there. So I'm going to make sure it's well inked. I'm going to turn it around. So I've over inked that there, haven't I? But I'm going to go for it. 
it just this, this bottom bit gives you a bit of cushioning and you know never let go of the stamp you know that's just great isn't it so stamping as well as everything else that you know can be done it's just amazing amazing so i'm going to get again i'm going to use my chamois they do these photopolymer ones do tend to stain a bit it's just the nature of them it doesn't affect the images but you know if i showed you some of my other ones i'm trying to think where i use one today and it's stained and they just do get stained a bit let me do one of my well used and well loved ones and you'll see this is well used and you'll see that the red just seems to red or pink whatever i've been using tends to taint it a bit so it doesn't affect the image it doesn't affect the image that it stamps out but they're not quite as strong as the other ones they, they last quite a long time thousands thousands of images i think but um obviously the red rubber you can't go wrong with the red rubber stamp so i think i've covered everything um i'm just going through my list and there's so many things you can do but more importantly you save money they'll last and they'll work for you so you know really a bit of a 101 today um and i hope you really enjoyed the video please leave me a comment um if you don't want it anything you'd like to know anything you'd like to you know any questions you might have or also any future suggestions for videos or anything you'd like me to do or show you how i do please leave me a comment um so i would make more videos for you so um they keep me going so yes but i really hope you enjoyed today it's very different and i hope i've gone off a bit too long really but um it's really important i wanted to show that to you thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time on craft to enjoy i'm an independent stamp demonstrator thank you very much Bye bye